Tonight, elimination. I feel like my time's running out. Who will be the first to go? We couldn't base this around friendship. A grueling challenge. Let's just keep digging. Has our couples all at sea. I got to the stage where I couldn't find me bum with a funnel. The contestants face their deepest fears. This is not what I came here for. And in the weigh-in... It's crunch time, and the question is, have you done enough? Walking back into the lounge room after the weigh-in, I was feeling mixed emotions because I knew we were about to vote out one of our friends. Um, but at the same time, I was really proud of us all for pulling such big numbers. been unfortunate to fall below the yellow line, but you've still done the best that you can do. Thanks, mate. Ellen and I have got, I guess, one last chance to keep ourselves in the game. And by speaking to some of the group, we were hoping that our, it was going to be a positive result. My question to you is, do you think you're a target with the double bracelet on or not? We thought we were doing the right thing with the bracelet to not hurt anyone. and. We've got to plead for another chance. To know that my time could be made very, very short because of whatever decision anybody else makes, it's really hard to take on. We feel that like we deserve to be here more than Alan and Romy. We lost bigger numbers than them this week. We didn't do any sort of game plays by taking the gold bracelet, taking a hit for the team. You know, we worked our butts off and we've been encouraging everyone from from the get-go. Definitely. And we're in the same boat as you. We're not in it to win it. We just want to be here. We it's just want to be here. Time. Hi everyone. Hi, hi, hi. Welcome to the elimination room. Unfortunately, the biggest loser journey is about to finish for one couple. Jenny and Phoebe, Alan and Romy. While your weight loss this week was impressive, unfortunately, it wasn't enough. You fell below the yellow line, and now you're facing elimination. Phoebe? Yep. Are you ready to go home yet? No. Do you feel like you've learnt enough yet? No, I feel like I've barely even started. And I bet it's the same for everyone else on this table. You know, we've, we've got a couple of blocks on the base, but it's not a pyramid yet. We're not at the top. We're nowhere near it. Romy, why is it so important for you to stay here for as long as possible? I've tried to lose my weight for the last 15 years. I've um, tried for the last five years since I've known Al to have a baby. And we can't. And I feel like my time's running out. Contestants, it's decision time. Each couple will cast one vote. The first couple to reveal their votes will be the red team, Wayne and Jeff. Hayley, this, this was extremely difficult for us and, and Jeff and I were both divided on, on which way to go. Both these couples are in our training group and both have trained as hard as, as anyone else. But in the end, we, had, we thought that we had to come back to strategy and to who we thought was the stronger couple. And with that in mind, sorry, but we voted for Alan and Romy.
Next to reveal their vote will be the green team, Rick and Joe. We adore both couples. Um, at the end of the day, one couple we think's playing the game a bit better than me and Rick thought they would be and have got a lot of potential, which worries both of us. So our vote goes to Alan and Romy. Alan and Romy, you now have two votes. Next up, the boys in blue, Shannon and Chris. This was so hard. We believe one couple has given themselves a decent building block being here in just a short time. And the other couple has a lot to be here for. So we've voted for Phoebe and Jenny. Phoebe and Jenny, you now have one vote. Alan and Romy, you now have two votes. The next couple to reveal their vote will be the grey team, Phil and David. Hayley, it was a really gut-wrenching decision that Dave and I had to make as well. But, you know, it is a game and a competition. And having said that, this couple really have the ability to take this game by the scruff of the neck. And for that reason, we've had to choose Alan and Romy. Really sorry, Alan Romy. We pray that you um, do have a baby one day and I think you make great parents. Alan and Romy, that's now three votes for you. If you receive one more vote, you will be eliminated. Next up, the yellow team. Caitlin and Dana, it's time to lift the lid on who you voted for. Hayley, I think this couple who we are voting for tonight have proven this week that they are a potential threat to myself and Caitlin in this competition. They have shown such strength, determination and motivation and we believe that they will continue on and be successful in their weight loss journey. That is why we have voted for. Alan and Romy, if you receive one more vote, you will be eliminated. Caitlin and Dana. Hayley, I think this couple have shown such strength, determination and motivation, and we believe that they will continue on and be successful in their weight loss journey. That is why we have voted for. Alan and Romy. Alan and Romy, you now have four votes. Your biggest loser journey ends here tonight. I'm gonna kick your ass in the marathon, you watch. <laughs> <laughs> That's my girl. Alan, before you go, you've just got one more piece of business. On your wrist is the double bracelet. You must now pass the bracelet onto someone else. Alan, who have you decided to give the double bracelet to? Hayley, it's something I gave a fair bit of thought to and um, the person I've decided to, to give it to has astounded me with, with their results and their drive. And I do believe that this person can go all the way. So in saying that, I'd like to... Pass the bracelet to Caitlin. Caitlin, how do you feel about receiving the double bracelet? 
Do you want it? Not really. <laughs> Already my arm's heavy just from putting it on. And it worries me. Well, Alan and Romy, it's time to say goodbye and to leave Camp Biggest Loser. This morning we packed all our stuff into our backpack and we got into the cars and we were all just busting to know what was coming up. When we arrived at the beach, we had no idea what was going to be in store. And we walked down the beach and Hayley was standing at the end and that's when the nerves started to kick in. Welcome to beautiful Palm Beach. Today is challenge day. Competing as couples, it's you and your partner against the rest. And believe me, today you'll want to get on top of your competition. Because the prize up for grabs is huge. Immunity. Where you're standing right now are rowboats buried deep in the sand. On my signal, you will start digging until you and your partner have dug up a boat. We just thought, how far are these boats down? How big are the boats? You must then carry your boat 200 metres to the other side of the beach. When you reach the other side, you'll find a pair of oars tied together. Once you've managed to untie the oars, one person from each couple must then row 500 metres out to a pontoon and collect their team's flag. Lisa said to me, have you ever rowed before, Jan? And I was like, in the bathtub when I was like four. Once you've retrieved your flag, you will then row back to the beach and reunite with your partner. For the final leg of the challenge, you and your partner must race the 200 metres back here and plant your flag on the finish line. Now, before we get started, Wayne and Chris, due to medical issues, your partners, Jeff and Shannon, are unable to compete in today's challenge. So you both now have the option of sitting this one out or competing solo. Yeah, to sit out and watch them compete while they're burning calories and I'm sitting there, come to weigh in next way in, it could make the difference between me going home or staying. Wayne, what's it gonna be? I'll compete single. And Chris, how about you? Can't let this one beat me, I'll go it alone. Okay, is everyone ready? Yes! Take your marks, set. We took off, I basically fell at my knees where I was and started digging. We were heads down, bums up, digging, digging, digging. Every time you seemed to dig, the sand would come back in. <sighs> Me and Rick were pretty lucky. We found our boat straight away, so we could use our strength to dig straight down to it. Make the hole dig water so you're not falling out. This is so deep. It's just an absolute killer. You can see the boat there in the sand, and it's just like, you know, how hard can it be to get this thing out? Well, it can be really hard. Once me and Rick got a big chunk of our boat out, we just had to dig down the side. Sure enough, once we pulled on it hard enough, it slid out. Why can't I find anything? I really felt for Chris. He was like a lost sheep. I mean, he just couldn't find a boat. I thought that the best way to do this was to ask Chris, come and join over here and let's see if we can get the boat. I carried the boat probably halfway down the track just so he could get his breath because he had to row. 
Get your vest, Rick. I'll untie the thing. Pull it out instead of pushing it in, Caitlin. With your feet like that. Don't <laughs> flick sand at me. That was an accident. As soon as you get to them boys, you got a paddle, remember? Way you weren't, he had the paddle probably 500 metres out to get our flag. Try and head that way, because the wind's taking you that way. Come on, just keep digging. Oh, I see, you've got that side, now we just got to get this side over here. I can still see Joe on the shore, and I can still see no one coming. You're nearly there, mate! I can still see Joe on the shore, and I can still see no one coming. I grabbed the green flag as quick as possible because I knew there'd be a couple coming eventually. I want to get the flag, and I want to get back into shore. Do you reckon you could row it if we pop it? <laughs> Where is everyone? This is us. Let's go, baby. This is us. Community. Me and Joe hit the other side of the sand dune carrying our flag. I run with the flag just so Rick could get his breath back. We got down to put the flag on. I handed the flag to him and said to him, you did the hard work to get it so you can put it on. We won immunity, so we'll save for another week. It's like a running race. There's first, there's second, there's third, there's fourth. Once the first person gets across the line, People don't stop and then walk off the track. If it's a race, everybody has to finish the race. Go on, Wayne. Uh, oh, Wayne, no. Got it oh, now, mate. Boys. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the agreement that we made was that we would get the boat out. I would row out, I would get my flag, and then I would wait for him, and he would row out and get his flag, and then we would run back. Go on, Wayne, we've got some more coming. Keep moving and get back so I can get out there. Paddle's ready, don't grow, put it me out of the water. Yeah. I'm thinking I'm going to muster all the energy I can to get Phil a head start, so I've grabbed the boat and, like an outboard, I've just pumped the legs to push him as far as I could. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> you big baboon! Drink, I'll pull back to me. OK. Let's one, go. One, two, three. Ah. One more, one more. One, two, three. Ah. That's it. Oh, You've got to go that way. I was rowing and I was getting somewhere, but I was just veering off. And at that stage, I got to a point where I reckon I was about 500 metres sideways from the target. Please. Just go straight with a broken sailor. I'm seeing Wayne with his flag, and I'm looking in the distance, and I'm thinking, where's Phil? <laughs> he's, he's nowhere to be seen. What? Then I came back, my oar snapped, and all of a sudden the boat had no oar. Yeah, Wayne's got his flag, we've got to bust it all. I was stuck in a situation of trying to paddle with one paddle, and I was going nowhere, and I decided then to get out of the boat and then try to pull the boat back. You're right, Wayne-o! Try rowing a boat with a, with a broken oar, it's nearly impossible. I didn't know what else we could do. His race was over. So what happened? The oar broke, I thought it snapped. So the boat's not usable? <laughs> When Wayne came back with the red flag and he told me the boat was broken, I didn't know what to think. And then he just started walking off the beach. And I don't know whether it was the heat of the moment or what it was, but I felt jibbed. I felt as though he played me. Oh, don't help anyone in this game. Whether it was selfish on my point, taking the, the red flag and, and taking it down there, maybe it was, but at the time, I didn't think of that. I could see this boat probably another 50, 100 yards past the pontoon. This poor Phil. These flags are getting further and further away. We'd been digging for what seemed like hours, and I looked around us, and it was only us girls left on the beach while the boys had gone. It was you know, obvious that we weren't going to get our boat out, so we gave up. 
I'd hate to estimate it, but I reckon I was actually about a kilometre and a half, if not two k's, past the target. I got to the stage where I, I couldn't find me bum with a funnel, pretty much. I thought to myself, it's all over, Phil. It's all over. Oh, thank God, we're the first girl team. Today's challenge was awesome. As hard and horrid as it was at times, it was inspiring that we could do that. <laughs> we did it! <laughs> I realised how far past I was, and I knew that I was that far away, and time had gone by, that I really just had to call it quits. I just had no control of that rotten rubber dinghy. When they told me that some of the other boats never got out of the ground, it did make me feel a little bit better. Well, Rick and Joe, congratulations. You've both won immunity at the next weigh-in. I think everyone's going to think that me and Joe are threats because of how well we did today. Obviously, by the, our performance, we probably are. Well, guys, it's time to head back to Camp Biggest Loser, and I'll see you soon. Arriving at Camp Biggest Loser today, I knew I couldn't wait to get with my contestants because we have a surprise. Hey! hey. Geez, you guys are far too sweaty to be in here. <laughs> guys, we think, with the effort you've put in so far this week, we'd love to see you in something other than training clothes. So what if we ask you to get changed into some nice clothes? <laughs> and we're going out for the afternoon slash evening. When Shannon and Michelle said they had a surprise for us, we all immediately thought it was going to be a reward because they asked us to dress up, so we're all very excited. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hey, hey. And welcome to the Riverside Theatre. So you're probably wondering why we brought you here? Yes. To see a show, maybe? Maybe. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> well, tonight, there is a show on, and that show is you. <laughs> I thought, oh, no, we're not going to do some ballet or anything, do we? We don't have to dress up in leotards and stuff. This is going to be shocking. In two hours' time, this theatre is going to be packed. <laughs> and the people occupying those seats will be here to see you. Actually, they'll be here to listen to you. <laughs> because tonight, you are going to take yet another giant step outside your comfort zone and confront something most people go out of their way to avoid. Speaking in public. First thought, I'm going home. I thought, let's go, I'm going, can't do this. Yeah, I thought I'd just give up now, it'd be easier. Tonight's audience will largely be made up of people that once applied for The Biggest Loser. Each of you, on your own, will stand up here on this stage. And for five minutes, the floor will be yours. I just wanted to vomit, I just... That's not what I'm here for, and I just thought this is one thing I'm not going to be able to do. Coming up on The Biggest Loser. This is the second hardest thing I've done in my life. I just can't do this, and I can't talk about this anymore. This isn't just a process about weight loss, it's a process about regaining your confidence and regaining your self-belief. Now, with a drill like public speaking, and speaking about yourself, your story, and really putting it out there, this enables people to get a handle on who they were, where they're going, and at the same time, get their confidence back. Tonight's show was going to be us doing public speaking on our own, and I couldn't deal with it. I thought, I just can't do this, and I can't talk about this anymore. So I just walked out. I don't want them to just... come emotionally get up there and get through it. Do you know what the amazing thing about this is? Everyone in that audience <sighs> wants you, wants to hear from you, and no one... I don't like the limelight. I don't like to bring attention to myself. I'm just quite happy to be Lisa. 
the mum of Chelsea had taken. That's all. And you know what? You only get nervous because you care. If you weren't nervous, there would be a problem. Hey Don, um, my name's Rick. Um, just like everyone here in this room, myself and every other contestant, we've had many triggers in our life that cause us to eat. It could be anything. Mine was because my girlfriend of seven years, who I love dearly, had a um, miscarriage in February. Uh, I put on over, over 20 kilos since February. And that's why I chose Biggest Loser. You know, we all have so triggers in our life that cause us to eat, and uh, you just gotta deal with them. And instead of going to the fridge, you have to deal with them. And so that's what I wanted to tell you. Uh... <laughs> we all knew that they would get out on stage. We just weren't sure how they would handle themselves out there. And many of them really enjoyed it. A few of them stood tall, and got some very clear and inspirational messages out there. The big thing I've learnt in the house is it's about honesty and respect. I can still remember filling out a food diary. You know, who's done that? And cheated. Oh, I didn't really have that little Mars bar. <laughs> you know, ooh, you know. You're just lying to yourself. You know, if you can't be honest to yourself, what hope have you got? When I was 16, my mum passed away from cancer. After she passed away, I just lost hope of everything, pretty much gave up, continued eating. Weight never crossed my mind. I was just so depressed, so just self-loathing that I just didn't want to continue on with anything. I'm only 22 and my sister's scared that I'm going to die by the time I'm 30. So with that in the back of my mind, I go out to every training session and just nail it. G'day everyone, my name's Wayne and I'm 43 years of age. Six months ago there was the floods in Brisbane and I'd gone to pick up my, my little three and a half year old girl Sienna who I just loved to death. I went to pick him up from daycare and it was about 5.30 in the afternoon. I went and picked up my son from work who's 17 and we're coming home and the storms hit and it was, it was deep. The, the water had started getting high and coming back all of a sudden it was dark, I, I hit the water I drove in, I had a four-wheel drive, I, I thought I'd, I'd be able to get through it quite easily. We started to drive in and they got up to the end of the wheels. I said, well, keep going, I've got to keep going. I couldn't see, I'd, I'd wound the window down, it was getting deep. And all of a sudden we hit it and we couldn't go any further, the water was pouring in the car. So I had to try to get out. Three and a half year old screaming in the back, it was, it was dark and, and we knew the water was pouring in and pouring in. I said to my son, push me out the window and I couldn't get out, I couldn't get out the window. I was stuck. 160 kilos doesn't get out the window, it's really easy. I said to my son, I don't care what you do, mate. I said, just push me, mate, just push me. Get me out. And finally he used both feet and he pushed me out the window and I fell into the water. It was up to here, it was up to the waist. I said, mate, pass me Sienna and we'll walk out of here. He passed me Sienna and we walked out, trudged out for probably about 500 metres to get up the hill. I knew then it was time. I still shake today talking about it. No one sitting here today wants to experience that. So I applied for the biggest loser. I'm here now. I'm nervous. But it's the best thing I've ever made in my whole life. And if I can give you guys any advice, tomorrow's not, not too late to start. Give it your best shot. And hopefully you can enjoy the journey that we share at the moment. Thanks very much. As soon as I finished and they were applauding, I felt really good. Mate, absolutely amazing. Oh, yeah. You nailed it. Just so good. Yeah. So good. How do you feel? You nailed it. You nailed it.
Hello, I'm Lisa. I'm 41 and I'm from Perth. And this is the second hardest thing I've done in my life. The hardest thing was leaving my kids to do this. But there's a reason that I'm here. Because I want to be a better mum. One of my biggest regrets is that I've got no photos of me with them as babies because I hated my photo being taken. So I was always behind the camera and never in it. And I'll never get that back. I'll never have a photo of me with my little girls. And that destroys me as a mum. I always cry. If I don't cry, I laugh. <laughs> so, <laughs> a little bit of time I'm in this house is a huge sacrifice to my kids. But a little bit of time I have away from them will hopefully give me longer years when I get out of here so I can live longer with them and watch them grow up. So stop living with regrets and just make the changes now. Thank you. Oh, you finished. You did it. I feel like I did something that I never thought I could of. I don't know that I did a very good job of it, but, you know, I've got to feel good that I did get out there and do it. It's time to weigh in. Has all the hard work paid off? The weigh-in is next. This is our last chance training. Everything does depend on this. There is no excuses. Last chance to exhaust the contestants outright. It's time to push through. We need to make sure that every store of carbohydrate in their body is expended. I hope that when I get up on the scales, it's going to reflect the effort I've put in. Ask yourself, is this the best you've got? You need to bring out your A game. Last chance training is probably the toughest and most important out of them all. No walking. Going into a weigh-in, those guys smashed up some calories and really drained themselves. Walking into the weigh-in room, it was still as nerve-wracking as the first week. Everyone's hoping for big numbers, hoping for great results. My biggest concerns about weigh-in is, have we been able to do enough to lose the weight that we want to? Hi, everyone. Hi. Hi. Welcome to the weigh-in. Contestants, how do you measure up against your fellow competitors? Well, that's what we're about to find out. But this week, we enter new territory. At the public speaking event, you were promised a reward if you all faced your demons and spoke about your lives on stage. Well, I can now tell you what that reward is. There will be no yellow line in this weigh-in and no elimination this week. When Hayley told us there wouldn't be elimination, I was still pretty nervous about weighing. You still want to do well. However, Jeff is in hospital and unable to attend today's weigh-in. So, Wayne, you'll be weighing in alone. Contestants, the moment has arrived. It's time to weigh in. First up on the scales, Rick and Joe. Rick, your previous weight was 157.8 kilos. Joe, you weighed 167.6 kilos. Your current weight is. Oh, 
him again. <laughs> He's beat me again. Thought to myself, here we go, I'm gonna hear this for another week. Scales don't lie, so there's no way out of it. Rick and Joe, together, you have lost a total of 14.6 kilos. That gives you a total weight loss percentage of 4.49%. Guys, great effort. You can now step down. Between me and Rick, we've lost 42 kilos in just two weeks. It is hard to get your head around. Next, to step up onto the scales, Shannon and Chris. Chris, last week you weighed 120.5 kilos. Shannon, your previous weight was 200.5 kilos. Your current weight is... 10.7. Chris and Shannon, together you have lost a total of 10.7 kilos. That gives you a total weight loss percentage of 3.33%. I weigh under 200. I weigh under 200. <laughs> Celebrate it. <laughs> I was just so excited because I knew no matter what that I was under 200 kilos, which is what I've wanted to be since I got here. Next to face the scales, Lisa and Jana. Lisa, last week you weighed 113.2 kilos. Jana, you weighed 110.3 kilos. Your current weight is? I didn't want to look because I was scared. Lisa and Jana, together you've lost a total of? 8.2 kilos. <laughs> that gives you a total weight loss percentage of 3.67%. Next to weigh in is Caitlin and Dana. Caitlin, your previous weight was 164.2 kilos. Dana, you weighed 96.5 kilos. Your current weight is? I'm a little bit nervous. After losing 15 kilos last week, I'm not expecting a big number, so I'd be very happy with five kilos. Yes. Cool. <laughs> Caitlin and Dana, together, you've lost a total of 9.3 kilos. That gives you a total weight loss percentage of 3.57%, well done. Caitlin, are you starting to notice changes? I can't remember actually feeling this good about myself. I'm proud that I haven't given up. Well done, girls. You can now join the others. I'm definitely happy with the fact that we lost nearly 10 kilos in the second week. Next to weigh in, our twins, Elise and Tennille. Elise, last week you weighed 97.6 kilos. Tennille, you weighed 88.4 kilos. Your current weight is? I was just amazed. <laughs> For Elise to pull over four kilos, that's incredible, especially in the second week. I was so proud of her. Elise and Tennille, together, you've lost a total of 8.4 kilos. That gives you a total weight loss percentage of 4.52%. And it puts you into first place. Nice work, guys. When Elise and I get out of here and we're both going to be the skinny twins, it's going to be great. We're putting in the effort and it's paying off. It's time to weigh in Jenny and Phoebe. Phoebe, last week you weighed 108.9 kilos. Jenny, you weighed 122.4 kilos. Your current weight is...
Phoebe, last week you weighed 108.9 kilos. Jenny, you weighed 122.4 kilos. Your current weight is... Phoebe and Jenny, together, you've lost a total of 9.7 kilos. That gives you a total percentage weight loss of 4.19%. Good job, guys. Jenny, 5.4 kilos. Is that what you're expecting? No, it's just <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> Can you imagine what a slim, healthy Jenny is going to feel like? Nope. Are you excited about it? Yes, definitely. Well, if you keep losing 5.4 kilos a week, you'll oh. be there pretty quickly. <laughs> that might be hard to keep up. Thanks, guys. You can now join the others. <laughs> Next to step up on the scales, Phil and David. Phil, last week you weighed 135.1 kilos. David, you weighed 149 kilos. Your current weight is... <laughs> Phil and David, together you've lost a total of... 13.3 kilos. That gives you a total weight loss percentage of... 4.68% and it moves you into first place. Good job. Well, there's just one more person to weigh in. Wayne, your partner Jeff is currently in hospital, so you'll be weighing in alone. I walked up the scales and I'm on my own and no one's next to me. Wayne, your previous weight was 147.1 kilos. Your current weight is... Wayne, that's a loss of 7.6 kilos, and it gives you a total weight loss percentage of 5.17%, and puts you on top of the leaderboard. Fantastic job. For me personally, being so competitive, hitting the top of the leaderboard is fantastic. I mean, second last week and, and first this week, you know you're getting yourself in the right position in the competition. Wayne, fantastic result. You can now step down. We're not having Jeff there. It's you know, it's a bit sad, so not being able to share the moment. I can't wait for him to get back. Congratulations, everyone. Another great week. But this week's individual biggest loser is Rick. Congratulations. It felt great to be the week's biggest loser, because I know I've worked pretty hard, but, you know, I can work harder. You really came into your own this week, and to lose 8.2 kilos is amazing. Guys, you should all be extremely proud of what you've done here today. You've all got a huge week coming up, but it's only just the beginning. Good luck, everyone, and I'll see you soon.